So this week we are going to talk um, in section 12.2 about inverses. And inverses are just things that undo other things. So I'll give you an example that I'm sure that you'll will make sense to you. Let's say that I had some number plus two. Um, so that means that like, and I'll say y equals that. So if x was five, I add to it and I get seven. Or if x was 10, I add to it, to it and I get 12. And I'll just do one more example. If x was 17, I'd add two to it and I get 19. So there's a relationship between x and y. So notice that's what's happening is I have this input x, something's done to it, and it gives me this output y. That's that just that idea of a function. So in this plus two function, uh, I plug in x, out plops x plus two, right? The inner workings of this machine is basically take the input and add two to it. Now, um, what I want you to think about is what would undo that? In other words, what's the operation that would uh, work this backwards? In other words, if I have these answers, how would I know what input they came from? And this one's pretty straightforward. It, it's x minus two, right? Because if I take 19 and I subtract two from it, I get 17. So in this one, I have these inputs and outputs. In this one, 12 minus 2 is 10, 7 and 5. I also have these inputs and outputs. But what's happened is the inputs and the outputs have, have switched. I've switched um, what was an input for this is now an output for that. In other words, they undo each other. Um, this, this function, I'm, I was calling it y there, but how about I call it um, f of x is x plus 2. So that does something. And this thing that undoes it, I'm going to write it as the inverse of x. So if I have a function, the way that I write its inverse is f inverse of x. Now that negative 1 right there, that's pretty unfortunate. It does not mean to the negative 1 power. It doesn't mean flip the fraction, like taking something to a negative power means. Um, unfortunately, we use that same symbol to also mean the inverse, the thing that undoes it. So what inverses do is they basically switch the inputs and the outputs. Everything that was an input for here is an output for this, and vice versa. Everything that was an output for this is an input for that. That's just our basic idea of inverses, of things that un undo each other. So let me think about, uh, let's say I have a function. I'm going to define this function as a list, just a collection of points. Um, I'm going to make this a 3-2. And I'll write the rest of it. So notice this is a collection of inputs and outputs for f. So if I asked you what f of 5 was, the input's 5, so the output's 7. So take a second and think about what this would be and what that would be. And you can pause it if you want, or you can just listen to me keep talking. Um, f inverse of 8, so if f of x is this, f inverse of this is just basically all these switch, the inputs and the outputs switch. So f inverse of 8, what I'm going to look for is the output, and what it will tell me is the input that's associated with it. So f inverse of 7, if the output was 7 and f, the input must have been 5. Again, inverses work these things backwards. So uh, what if I had um, f inverse of f of 3. All right, so that's interesting. So f of 3, the input's 3, so the output must be 2. So f inverse of 2. Well, if the output's 2, it must have had an input of 3. So it's 3. So notice that this spits out what I originally put in, because these undo each other. So if I have f uh, inverse of f of x, and notice we could also write that this way using this notation, it just gives me x. It just gives me that original input. Because f does something to x, f inverse undoes it, giving me x back, giving me that original input. Uh, similarly, if I had it the opposite way, if I went f of f inverse, 
of x. I also get x. Then they undo each other. Absolutely. x into f of x, f inverse undoes something, and then f does the undoing. Give me the original input. Let's do one more thing like this. What if I had f inverse of f inverse of 6? Well, let's see. F inverse of 6, that's the output. So when 6 is the output, what's the input? It was 2. What's F inverse of 2? Well, it's, I'm looking for an output again. So the output was 2. The, inverse, the input must have been 3. So that would be 3. So one way to think about these is in these tables. And again, inverses, what they do is they, uh, they undo each other. They switch the input and the output. They switch the X and the Y. All right, so let's say I had some function. I'll call it uh, I'll call it g in this case, 2x minus 5. And I want to find the inverse to that. I want to find the thing that undoes it. So let me think of this 2x minus 5. Um, this is the same as saying y equals 2x minus 5, some output. Now, what inverses do, um, like I've been saying, is they switch the input and the output. So as I go to find the inverse, uh, the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to switch x and y. And by doing that, I'm switching the input and the output. So what is y is going to become x, and what was x is going to become y. And then I just do the same relationship, 2y minus 5. And now I'm just going to solve for, for y, get y alone. So add 5 to both sides, x plus 5 equals 2y. Uh, divide everything by 2, and it looks like y equals um, x plus 5 over 2. So I'm claiming that if g is that, its inverse must be this. And I got it by switching x and y and solving for y. So this is the thing that undoes that. So what I'd like to do now is test it. So if I said g of 3. So that would be 2 times 3 uh, minus 5. That's 6 minus 5 is 1. So g of 3 is 1. So let me take this 1 and plug it into here. g inverse of 1. Now what this should do is this should undo that, giving me my original 3. So let's see, 1 plus 5 divided by 2. 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. <laughs> 3. <laughs> yes, it is. So interestingly, g of 3 is 1, but g inverse of 1 is 3. So what I just basically did was I went g inverse of g of 3. And I got 3 back because g of 3 is 1. g inverse of 1 is 3. Yeah, so these are inverses of each other. So I have this 2x minus 1 and this x plus 5 over 2. Interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to graph them and see, see what they look like. So here we go. I had these equations. Uh, one of them was um, 2x minus 5. That's what the graph of that looks like. And the other was um, x plus 5, the whole thing divided by 2. Now if I look at this, it's kind of interesting. Like, see this point that's at 3, 1? If the input and the output switch, that must mean there's another point here at 1, 3. Yeah, there is. X and Y switch. And notice 5, 5 there. So like this point that's at uh, 7, 6, there must be another point that's at the point 6, 7. So if X and Y switch, what that means is I have some symmetry in this. In other words, like everything that was an X became a Y. And everything that was a y became an x. So if I graph something and it's inverse, it's going to have symmetry across this 45 degree line, across this line, y equals x, because the x is switched and the y is switched. So that's a, that's a good kind of visual check. You could graph them both and see if they have that sort of symmetry. And if they do, then you're in, then you're in great shape. So let's find some more, some more inverses. So, uh, I have some function I'm going to call h of x, and 
x cubed minus 2 is the, is the function. So if I want to try and find its inverse, first I'm going to write it as input equals, I'm sorry, output equals input minus 2. I'm going to switch that x and that y. So now I have x equals y cubed minus 2. So after I switch the x and the y, like I did before, I'm going to solve for y. So get y all alone. So add 2 to both sides. x plus 2 equals y cubed. And the way I undo the third power is the third root. So y would equal the third root of x plus 2. So that seems to be the inverse. Let me graph them both and see what they both, both look like. So my first one was uh, x cubed minus 2. Looks like this. And my, my next one that I thought that I had was the, uh, the third root. So the third root of x plus 2. And if I take a look at it, it has that symmetry across that y equals x line. I'll, I'll throw the y equals x in here just so we can, just we can see it. I'll make it dotted. So notice that it's, uh, it's symmetrical across that line. So those are, those are inverses. Another thing I want you to notice is they're both functions. They both pass the, um, the vertical line test. So since they are both functions, I can write this in that function notation. Um, the inverse of this is that. Great, let's do another one. How about um, y equals 3x squared plus 1? I'll say, uh, go to find its inverse, switch the x and the y. So switch the input and the output. That's what inverses do. Solve for y. So subtract 1 from both sides. Divide by 3. Sorry, I wrote that as cube. And then square root it. Now when I square it, notice I get a plus or minus. Interesting. So let me, um, let me graph both of these. And, and see what happens. So my first one was uh, 3x squared plus 1. So there's that. Looks like what I expect it to. And I don't have a plus or minus button on this um, for Desmos. So I'm going to graph part of it. And I get, I get that. And that's the plus case. The minus case would look like this. So there is the function, there is the reflection of it, the thing that I got is the inverse, but notice this is not a function. It doesn't pass the vertical line test. So even though this undoes this, this is not, this is not a function. I can't write this as, as a function. So I can sketch it, and I know that, the, you know, the reason this happens is because, um, so look, if I plug in t uh, 1, I get 4, and if I plug in negative 1, I get 4. But this tells me that if I plug in 4, I get positive 1 and negative 1 as output. It's not a function. So it's not a full inverse. We kind of we can call it a left-hand or right-hand inverse. We won't get uh, into that quite a bit. But um, this, we could say that's the inverse of that, but we can't write it as in that notation because it's not a function, and this is function notation. That's a pretty subtle point that I'm not going to make a huge deal about. Let's do a couple more of these. I have some function, x minus 2 over x minus 3, and I want to find its inverse. So uh, I'm going to write this as output equals input minus 2 over input minus 3. And now I'm going to do the switch x and y. So anything that was an output becomes an input spot. And anything that wasn't an, uh, input becomes an output spot. Now this type of problem is uh, it's tricky and what we're going to do is really just technique. So when you have this um, x over x, this is the way to go. So notice that I'm dividing by this y minus 3. I have this denominator. I want to get it out of there just because I don't know how to deal with it down there. So I'm going to multiply both sides by that denominator. So that this 
divides out over here. And what I'm left with is uh, x times y minus 3 is equal to uh, y minus 2. So let me distribute that x into there. So now I have xy minus 3x equals y minus 2. And I'm working to solve for y. I want to get y all alone. So here is the very clever thing to do to solve these. And I really do love this. It's, it's super clever. I have y's in a couple different places. So I'm going to get all the y's on the same side. So I'm going to subtract y from both sides. And notice if I do that, I have xy minus, minus y. And I'm going to get this 3x out of here, so I'm going to add 3x to both sides. So over on the right-hand side, then, I have 3x minus 2. So again, y minus y cancels out here. Negative 3x plus 3x cancels over here, and this is what I have left. Now here's what is great about doing this. Um, now that I have this, both of these y's here, what I can do is I can factor a y out of that. In other words, bring it out. So think about the distributive property in reverse. Take that y out. What's left is an x minus 1. And if you don't see that, distribute the y back in and see how it does this. And now that equals 3x minus 2. And uh, I'm almost there. Notice this is y times that x minus 1. So just like I, I multiplied by that y minus 3, I could divide by this x minus 1. So I'm going to divide both sides by x minus 1. And notice uh, here, it divides out to a 1. And what I'm left with, I'll throw it right up here, is y equals uh, 3x minus 2 over x minus 1. So I'm claiming that this is the inverse of that. Let me, let me graph them both and see what, see what happens. So my first one looks like this, x minus 2 divided by x minus 3, except I better get rid of that monstrosity. So it looks like this. And then my other one, and if you'll notice, um, it's hard to see, but if I put in that y equals x line, zoom out a little bit, you can see that they're symmetrical across that line. They are, they are inverses of each other. Yes, that's a lovely thing. So what I'm going to do is another example uh, like this. All right, so my function, uh, I'll call it j, is uh, 3x minus 5 over 4x plus 3. Now let's make it 4x plus 2. I'm going to find its inverse. So first I'm going to write it like this. Okay, switch x and y. Inputs become outputs. Outputs become inputs. Okay, now I want to solve for y. Get y all alone. So I have this thing in the denominator. I'm going to multiply both sides by it to get it out of the denominator. So here it divides out. Here I'm going to uh, distribute that x into there. So I have 4xy plus 2x equals, that divides out, so 3y minus 5. Okay, I got y's all over the place, so I want to get all the y's on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 3y from both sides and subtract 2x from both sides. Get it so it's only y's over here. 4xy minus 3y equals negative 2x minus 5. So now I have a y here and a y here. I can factor a y out. So I have y times 4x minus 3. Again, if you don't see it, distribute the y back into there. Equals negative 2x minus 5. Divide both sides by this. And I have the inverse for j. And I could graph them both to check them. I could plug points in to check j inverse. 
So just one last thing that I'd like to do just to uh, to think about those these inverses. So if I had something like um, f of f inverse of nine, um, think to yourself, what would that end up being? Or what would f inverse of f of 17 end up being? Well, remember functions and inverses undo each other. So if f inverse undoes something and f does something, they cancel each other out. So this would just be nine. This is like plus two minus two or times five divided by five. Same thing here. Um, if I put 17 into f, I'll get some output. If I put that output into f inverse, it undoes it, giving me 17 back. And that's just, again, these relationships here. Um, f and inver inverse undo each other. f of uh, 3x plus, sorry, 1 over 2. And, and g of x is 2x minus 1 over 3. And I'm going to go f of g of x and see what happens. So this, it means plug g into f. So plug g into f. So f is 3 times some input uh, plus 1 divided by 2. That input happens to be g. So 2x minus 1 over 3. And if I go to simplify this, let's see, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So those divide out. Uh, plus 1 minus 1 is 0. So those divide out. Uh, 2 divided by 2 is 1. I'm just left with x. Oh, crazy. Crazy. <laughs> so what if I go g of f? of x. In other words, I plug f into g. So, um, g of f of x. So now what I'm doing is I'm plugging this into that. So g is 2 times some input minus 1 over 3. And that input happens to be f, which is 3x plus 1 divided by 2. You can kind of see the same thing will happen again. The, the 2's divide out. plus 1 minus 1 is 0, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and that also equals x. So what this means is these are inverses of each other. So f is g inverse, and g is f inverse. We can always check if things are inverses by plugging one into the other, making sure it just spits out x. Plugging the other into the one, making sure it spits out x as well. Give these inverses a try. Uh, work on solving them. Think about those e equations and graphs. Send me any questions that you have.